Welcome back to Proxim, everybody. And today we are going to be talking about something very unfortunate and something that I think is going to kind of shape the future of which units we can expect to be, you know, able to play in competitive games, you know, in tournaments, RTTs, whatever, going forward. And I think this is a change that affects everybody. And GW has kind of hinted at this over the course of the edition, but I don't think it's ever been this bad. We've seen a few units lost here and there from different codexes coming out, but there's always been either an alternative or, you know, those models were just really old and it was expected. They, they no longer had model support for, you know, many, many years. And I think this is one of the cases that kind of breaks that mold and is, is showing everybody in the community where GW wants to go with the units that they don't have quote unquote official kits for or that are part of Imperial Armor. And again, this is something that affects everybody, especially Xenos factions, because of course, as you guys know, we have some of the oldest kits, right? Xenos factions aren't exactly taken care of in the same way that Imperial factions are. So, of course, I'm talking about the orcs. So today there was an update, kind of a stealth update. They didn't really mention this at all. They just updated it. They said, Legends Orcs updated today. So, you know, I expected them to move maybe a couple of old units out, you know, units that they didn't even have models for anymore and that they weren't going to make models for. Totally understand, you know. But I didn't expect the absolute exodus of orc units moving over from you know, the, the Index and Imperial Armor to Legends. So we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to discuss the implications going forward for other Xenos factions as well, because I think this directly affects everybody. Everybody who plays a Xenos faction or a faction that is not popular enough to get new and updated kits should expect to lose those units when they get their codex. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. Dive right in. All right, orcs. So everything in red is what has moved into legends. And I just want to preface this by saying there's a lot of models in here that, you know, were not expected because these were kind of staples of orc lists for many, many, many years. You know, they've been in many orc codexes They've been a staple in the lore, you know, and stuff like that. So really not expected, but let's go ahead and take a look at these. And some of them are expected, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, looking at some of these, it's like, oh, of course those are gone, you know. But, or of course those went to Legends, but, but a lot of them aren't. So let's look at this. So the first thing you notice is the big mech with the custom force field. They recently replaced this with the new big mech. So this is a one-for-one -one trade. This is something that probably people kind of expect it a little bit kind of sucks because if you have that model with a custom force field it's now legends you could always proxy it and i'm sure a lot of tos wouldn't mind if you just proxied it as a regular big mech but it is unfortunate you have the big track which again i think correct me if i'm wrong in the comments i think this was a imperial armor unit if i'm not mistaken so you know imperial armor models getting downsized Boss Zagstruck. That sucks, right? And it seems like orcs and pretty much every faction are losing a lot of individual special characters. And again, this is something that really adds a lot of flavor to the game. We have Grot, the Grot Mega Tank, Grot Tanks, which also sucks <laughs> because, you know, you're not going to be able to use Grot Tanks, which. You know, I'm not saying they're, like, good or anything, but they're probably fun for Orc players, I assume, right? Especially if you wanted to make a full Grot army or something like that, this could definitely be a unit that you'd need. They're legends now. You can't run those in tournaments. You have Captain Badruck. Probably one of the biggest blows, guys. Probably one of the biggest blows. Really cool model. Really cool rules in the index, gone. No longer possible. So, GW is kind of saying, you know what, orc shooting, nah. 
not for us. We don't want that. The kill tank also goes in the bin in Legends. The Mad Doc, Grotznik, goes into Legends. Also sucks. Grotznik is cool. You know, and the by the way, guys, I don't even like orcs. They're not my favorite faction, like, at all. Um, but this is just really unfortunate. A lot of these names, these are like household names for orc players, you know. This is like after the big game, you know, you, you kind of touch the <laughs> touch the nameplate on the wall for good luck kind of orc models. The Mega Dread, really cool model from what I remember, gone. The Mecha Dread. I don't really remember the Mecha Dread, but that's gone. I think that was... I think both of those might have been Imperial Armor. Mech Boy Workshop. I think that was a fortification. I mean, I'm not too... I'm, I'm sure Orc players don't really care too much about that. Now, here's the big ones that they got me. And when I saw this, I was shocked. Because I, I almost kind of assumed that these guys would just be in the Codex, right? And that is the Knob with the War Banner. War Banner. And knobs on war bikes, especially knobs on war bikes. Knob on war banner or with wall banner. Yeah, I can kind of understand that. You know, it's kind of a weird model anyway. Knobs on war bikes, I don't get though. Because they were such an integral part of the codex for so many years. You know, you could always have knobs on war bikes. That was a thing. Completely gone. To my knowledge, there's no direct replacement. There's not a unit that kind of is the same thing, but a different name. You know, there's not beast snagging knobs on Warbike or anything like that. They just got rid of it. They just put it into Legends. Which means people can't run them in competitive play. And, you know, people who liked running bikes in competitive play would often run knobs on bikes in competitive play. And that sucks that they're now in there. Not only that, but, you know, if you want to run them in Legends and just have fun with them, they're limited to three models. So you can't even take them in big units anymore. And that also sucks, because that's kind of the orky thing, you know, to take them in big squads that hit really hard. Can't do that anymore. There are only three models a unit now. The Squiggeth also sucks, right? I know that was, I think, an Imperial Armor model. I'm almost 100% sure. But it sucks that they moved it in to Legends. Can't run a Squiggeth anymore. I, You know, was it competitive? Probably not. But still sucks. And lastly, the war boss on war bike. Absolutely insane. The war boss got moved over to legends. That's crazy to me. Now, that's 15 data sheets moved from the index and imperial armor over to legends. And only a few of them were directly replaced. Big Mech with Custom Force Field, yes, they did get a new Big Mech model, so you can kind of argue that, yes, you know, that was a direct replacement. But I don't think anything else got replaced. I don't think Orcs got a terrible amount of new units, correct me if I'm wrong. So this is just basically model calling. This is just downsizing the index even more, less options. You know, and I know a lot of it is GW's arguing, well, we can't balance all these data sheets together. But they seem to do fine balancing the marine data sheets. And the marine data sheets absolutely double, if not triple, or sometimes even quadruple the data sheets of other factions, especially those of the Xenos. So, you know, with the exception of maybe Eldar, I think they maybe double Eldar's data sheets. And we have like the highest amount of data sheets and, you know, among the Xenos factions, I would say. And that is only because, guys, we are one of the original factions because we are the best. We are the best of the Xenos. But, you know, orcs are up there too. Orcs were one of the classic armies alongside the Eldar and alongside the Space Marines. So seeing this is a tragedy. And I think it really does kind of spell out what GW plans for the rest of us, the rest of the Xenos. And I'm going to make a few predictions right now. And I think these are just, I'm just going to take them as fact moving forward. As far as the Eldar are concerned, when it comes to our Imperial armor, I think we can definitely expect a vast majority of those data sheets to be moved to Legends when the Codex drops. 
And I'm not saying this to scare anybody. I know a lot of people out there went and bought three units of Shadow Spectres. You know, they bought a couple of Lynxes. They bought a couple of, you know, Wraith Seers. And I'm just telling you guys right now, just being straight up and honest with you, to protect anybody out there who is thinking of investing super heavily in Forge World or anything else that's not an official GW kit but is a Forge World kit or something like that, or a model that doesn't isn't any longer in production, save your money. If you want to buy them for competitive play, there's some there's some great proxies out there that you can use. 95% of tournament organizers will not care if you're using proxies as long as they're on the same base, base size that is, as the other mod, the regular models, the official ones. So save your money on these things. Shadow Spectres are expensive. The Wraith Seer is expensive. Definitely save your money. Now, I would argue, and I'm going to look through, you know, the Imperial Armor Index for the Eldar in a couple minutes here. But I would expect that most of those are gone when the Codex comes around, which is a crying shame because there's so many cool units in there. But I guarantee you a couple things. One, I don't see any of those units getting a plastic kit, which means they're up for the chop. Just like the orcs got chopped, we're going to get fucking chopped. And I just think, expect it. You know? And I'm not, you know, trying to say that the game's going to suck now or whatever. Absolutely not. But it really is a shame that GW thinks that this is the way to balance the game is by condensing the data sheets to even less than they were before with factions that don't even have as many data sheets as Space Marine factions. I think that's just an absolute shame. And it really goes to show you where their thoughts are, which is with, you know, the dollar bill, which of course, you know, as a company, you can expect that. But there's no reason in hell why a unit should be sent to Legends because GW doesn't want to deal with it for balance issues. There's absolutely no reason. Because it just doesn't exist. There's no excuse for it. Will a couple of extra data sheets, like, like for example with Orcs, did these 15 data sheets really make the game balance so tilted that GW says, oh no, we can't deal with that. 15 data sheets more than usual? Oh, that's going to tilt the balance way out of control. We can't manage that. Absolutely not. Come on, think about how many Space Marine units... Space Marine data sheets there are. Every time a new Space Marine Codex comes out, it's like there's a new unit. Yes, a few of the units here and there have been taken off. You know, Space Marine players will say, oh, you know, we had, we were, we're going to have a huge calling of, you know, the original Space Marines, like tactical squads and stuff like that. But I don't think it's quite as bad as this because, you know, if you have a tactical squad, it's very easy to just say that they're a Primaris unit and just be done with it, Right. I mean, it kind of does suck, but you have so many data sheets anyways. I don't think really you have any room to complain about it. But, you know, with Xenos factions, you don't really have a whole lot of data sheets. So I, I just want to do, I'm going to show you guys something, right? Let's go to the orcs. Let's see if we can see the, we'll go to, um, we'll go to the Eldar and Pearl Armor in a second, but I'm trying to find orcs. Here we go. Let's look at the orcs real quick. Let's look at their index. Whoops, wrong thing. Sorry. We're going we're gonna to have to go to the index cards. No, let's see. Errata. Am I looking in the wrong spot here? Munitorum Field Manual. I think this is right here. Okay. Let's go to Orcs real quick. And I'm sure they have it updated by now, but maybe they don't. Maybe they didn't update it yet. Come on. Let's get to the orcs. I know I'm going to pass them if I go too quick. Okay. Here we go. These all fit on one page. Oh, and this doesn't even count the things that are taken off, right? So this isn't updated. Look, because you have Mad Doc right here. This is not updated. This is the index. 15 data sheets taken out. Mad Doc is taken out. Mech guns, I think are gone. They were already gone, but I think they're gone now. Mech Boy Workshop, gone. Let's see what else left. Knobs on War Bike, gone.
it's just sad, you know. Big mech with custom force field gone. A lot of units, basically. I want to say Snick Rot's gone. I maybe not. Maybe I misread that, but I think he's gone too. You know, it's just like a lot of models, and they don't have that many to begin with. Like this is nothing compared to Space Marines. Like if we go up to Space Marines, and consider that they've just taken out a bunch of org units, we go up to Space Marines. And all of their, like, chapters and stuff. Adeptus Canicus, Adeptus Custodes, Sororitas. Where's the... They aren't... Probably not even on here, because there's so many of them. <laughs> Canicus, like... I don't even think they're on here. I think they have their own thing, because they're so big. They're so massive. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. That must be it. They're just such a massive index that they're not even listed on here. They have their own thing. Let's double check that real quick. Codex Space Marines. Oh, it's right, because it's a codex. I don't have... Probably don't have access to it. But yeah, it's 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 massive, guys. It's absolutely massive. Um, so yeah, they have tons of data sheets. So that's just really unfortunate. And then every chapter has its own kind of data sheets as well to add on to that. So so you know, GW arguing that there's a balance issue by having that many data sheets is not cool. I expect probably some demons to go away as well when they get their codex. But it's just BS, you know. So let's go real quick to the Eldar Imperial Armor. Because I just want to show you guys really quick before we end this video. Because of course, as an Eldar channel, we need to be aware of this. No, I just want the... Oh, you know what? Sorry guys, it's in the... Um... It's in the Munitorum Field Manual. Let's go to the Eldari, the superior species in the galaxy. There we go. All right, we have a good number of them, right? Now, I think that everything that does not have... It is, is either out of production quite frequently or does not have an actual model anymore that's in production is going to go. And my predictions is Hornet. It's out. I love the Hornet, but I think it's going to go. I think Irolith and also the Shadow Spectres are going to go. I think the Skatar Wraith Knight. Skothak Wraith Knight, excuse me. <laughs> I think that's actually how you pronounce it. Skothak is... is so, <laughs> there's um, quite a few players who get on me for that. But I think that's gone because that's an upgrade kit, and I'm sure they're just going to get rid of it. The Titans I see staying, but only because they're Titans. And same thing probably with the Cobra and the Scorpion, just because they're massive super heavies, and I think those just in general stay Imperial Armor, if I'm not mistaken. I see the Nightwing going. The Lynx I see going. Wraith Seer is also an upgrade kit. I see that going, right? To Legends, I mean. And they'll probably have these things in Legends and, you know, they probably won't make them anymore for competitive tournament play. So you won't be able to see these things when the Eldar Codex comes out. And here's my other prediction is I don't think anything on Imperial Armor is getting moved over to the Codex. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I don't see it. Now, the good news is I think we're getting new warps. We're going to get all our aspects, you know. They're going to get new models. We're going to get all new Phoenix Lords, which is tight. And basically anything that's old is going to be updated. But I also see Prince Riel getting the boot. Prince Riel is probably going to go to Legends as well. Because I don't see them updating his model. Anything else that's probably going to go? Probably the Autark Skyrunner would be my guess. Autark Skyrunner gets kicked to Legends. 
Why? Because I don't think they're going to make a kit for him. That's why. They haven't done it already. It's a very easy. And also his options, if you look at his options, are very limited. So I definitely think he's going to Legends. As far as everything else, I think we're going to get all new Phoenix Lords, so that won't go to Legends. You know, basically we're good on everything. Except for Riel, Prince Riel, and Dutark Skyrunner. Everything else I think will will be fine. Yeah. But man, that still sucks, you know? That's that's really unfortunate that we might lose our Shadow Spectres, you know, or our Hornets. And I, I think just, you know, to put in the words of somebody else who's also a content creator and who told me about this and, and kind of brought this to light, th the writing's on the wall. I think a lot of the Forge World units and some of the other units they just don't have models for going right to Legends. And here's my take on Legends. I don't think it's a bad thing for the game to have units on Legends. As long as you update them and are consistent about making sure that they are balanced with the, in the index or the codex. Because if you don't, even if you're playing them casually among friends, it, it can kind of be frustrating. Because either they're going to really suck, they're not going to be good at all, or they're going to be really overpowered. You know? Um, an example of this is, you know, some Legends Eldar units are absolutely OP. You know, like the Corsair, I think it's a the, the jump pack versions of the Corsairs on on Legends have like three wounds apiece. They're like, you know, chosen almost. They're like Eldar chosen. It's ridiculous. Like, and that's obviously a typo, but GW's never bothered to fix it because they don't care. They're going to give one points value to whatever the models are there, whatever they think initially, without any playtesting or anything like that, and they're going to leave it at that. And you have to take it or leave it. It's like, hey guys, like, take it or leave it. You can either, you know, for this edition, play with these, you know, terrible models or play with these OP models who no one, now no one wants to play against you because this unit's absolutely broken, right? And that's horrible. That's a horrible thing to do to the game. So I don't really like this. Personally, I think this is a tragedy. And I think that for all you Eldar players out there who are wondering what to buy next, Hedge your bets on anything in Forge World. You know, and it's not 100% sure. I'm not 100% that they're going to, you know, just axe all of these units on here and just put them all to Legends. But they might axe a lot of them, and you have to be prepared for that. They've already axed things in the past, like the Bone Singer. They've axed the Wasp Assault Walkers. So there are things that they have axed. And of course, the Wasp Assault Walker is a little bit better because you can always just say it's a War Walker, right? But, you know, like for the bone seer, bone singer, you can always say it's just a spirit seer. So there's like things you could just say it is, and it's fine. You could still use the model, but man, that just really sucks that 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 happens. So I would hedge your bets on that if you're if you're out there, and I know a few guys in the Discord and stuff like that who are like really interested in the links. Guys, I don't know, man. It, it might might just go to legends, and you know, my my thing about legends also is that it's fine, but when I buy models, I don't buy them just because they're good. I buy them because I want to have fun with them in any environment. I want to have fun with them at tournaments. I want to have fun with them with my friends playing, you know, competitively against each other. I want to have fun with them playing casual games too. I want to be able to play them in every environment. If I am limited in the types of games I can play with a model that I buy with my money, I don't want to buy it, you know? I don't want to buy it. That's just my take on it. I know, like some people, rule of cool. Like I'm just playing casually anyway. You know, if Wraith Seer goes to Legends for whatever reason, I'm still gonna play my Wraith Seers against my friends. Totally awesome, and that's totally cool and fine. But it still sucks, and I, I think you guys would agree that you're never gonna get an update for your models. The entire edition, they're just gonna stay the same or very similar, and you either have to work with you know crap rules. Or you have to play with the notion that they're going to be super OP and your friends are going to start saying, dude, like this is a casual game and you're taking, you know, Corsairs with three wounds apiece, Eldar Infantry with three wounds apiece. How is that fair? And they're, they're kind of low points for that, for what you're paying. That's insane. And just, a, I mean, maybe I can show you guys this, this, and I don't think they've changed it yet, but let's go to Legends. Let's go right down to... Legends Eldari.
Legends. Legendary units. <laughs> Legends of the Legends. Where are they? Am I just missing it? Am I just blind or something? I'm blind. I'm just going to look for the Eldar symbol. Here it is. Okay, so... Phoenix, you know, and they have all the Legends units and stuff. Vampire Raider. Really cool units and stuff. But... But check this out, right? Okay, like the the Cloud Dancer Warband's pretty cool and everything. Bone Singer, Wasp Assault Walkers. Yeah, what is with this Corsair Sky Reaver Band? By the way, this is regular infantry. They have Deep Strike. They're basically Swooping Hawks with a five plus save, but with three wounds. How do they have three wounds? That makes no sense. They're infantry. They're Corsair infantry. It makes absolutely no sense. And they're really good. They can take a bunch of cool special weapons and stuff. They're really... I would actually kind of say OP. They're a little bit more expensive. I think they're 25 points a model, so you are paying more points for them. But they're three wounds apiece, and they get a bunch of special weapons. Like, if you look at their options, any number of models can have their Corsair firearm, which, by the way, the Corsair firearm is assault, lethal hits... It's a Laz Blaster, by the way. So they are Swooping Hawks, basically. But you can you can replace it with a Shard Carbine, a Shurken Cat... You, you'd never do the Shurken Catapult, by the way. Or the Spar Glaive. Let's see what the Spar Glaive is. You look at... That's a combat weapon, which is absolutely terrible. <laughs> so you'd never take that, by the way. So sorry that I even mentioned that. I That's awful. So, so you're taking the Corsair Firearm... And then for every five models, you can take all any of these. You can take fusion guns, dark lances, blasters, missile launchers. There's a bunch of different stuff. And the Fellar can be armed with, you know, a dissonance pistol or the void saber. I don't know what those do. Dissonance pistol. Oh, it's just a devastating wound pistol. Still good, you know, probably still good. But but three wounds apiece? Come on, you know? I mean, that's obviously not supposed to be supposed to be right the firestorm is extremely cheap and it's like a really good anti-fly platform you know you overwatch against everything with a fly special rule within you know it's it's range within 24 inches right because of overwatch range that's insane and then you have really bad models like Amalyn shadow guide and she sucks and she's never going to be good in legends and she's never going to get upgraded it's terrible and again, Corsair Reaver Band. So these guys are a little bit cheaper, I believe, and they're basically the same as the other guys. They just don't have the, you know, Sky Leap. Instead, they can move D6, just like Rangers. They're, they have the Ranger move. Wow, but two wounds apiece, or three wounds apiece in OC2. So you put this on this unit on an objective, and they have 30 wounds on the objective, you know? You throw things like Lightning Fast Reactions at them, and, you know, you throw things like Fortune on them, and, and all of a sudden they just become this super tough, insane unit. <laughs> and check this out. If a model from your army with the leader ability can be attached to a Corsair Void Reavers unit, it can be attached to this unit. Think about um, your brain in this unit, giving the whole unit 5 plus Feel No Pain. Come on. I mean, you can really get broken with this stuff if you think about it a little bit. It's just too insane for me. I just don't like it. I don't like how they just don't balance this stuff with the regular codex. And then they expect players to actually be happy about using these units that they had bought with their money. So, that's unfortunate. Just, just kind of feels bad, really. Really feels bad. So yeah, so that's my... That's my spiel, I guess, about the orcs and uh, about how we can kind of tell where the where the direction of GW is going with these models. And I know you, you know, a lot of you guys out there are gonna, you know, reply to the comments and say, "Well, I'm okay with this because you know, either I don't own Forge World models really, and I don't play with those models, or I'm fine with it because I understand that it's a more balanced experience." But I think the more balanced experience argument is not really that great because. Again, take a look at Space Marines. Like, how are they going to balance all those data sheets? Well, it, it turns out they do, right? That they, they are going to be willing to do that because Space Marines are the primary, you know, driving force of sales. Whereas they're letting these other armies kind of languish 
and they're letting units go into legends. It's almost like, you know, you're kind of uh, letting it kind of just erode over time until there's nothing left. I just think that's awful. And they've done that with a lot of armies, especially Eldar. And to tell you guys a quick story about Eldar, when I got into them in 3rd edition, they had some pretty old models, and they still have those models today. I was 9 years old. And those models were already old by my standards at 9 years old. I'm 31 now. And they're still there. Baharoth is still chilling. You know, Warp Spiders, they good. They still chill. Right? A lot of people are just not willing to buy them anymore. And it's just, you know, GW is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, manufacturer of miniatures in the world. And I think that for all the money we pour into this hobby, all the time and the effort, all the good things we have to say about it, you know, they should do something about this. This isn't right. You know, people, you know, invest a lot of time and money in these things and that should be respected. So that's my take on it. Again, I don't think that, you know, any gaming company should be expected to balance everything very perfectly right off the bat but but to give up on something and not even try is a slap in the face and i think that's what they did with the orcs they gave up they said we can't balance we can't possibly balance a war a war boss on a war bike it's impossible to balance we can't do it goes the legends come on same thing with knobs on war bikes you know how how hard is it to to balance a unit of knobs on war bikes it's not it's absolutely not. That was a shame. Especially since the orcs have a speed freaks detachment, which I think they would be perfect in. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, nope, can't do it because it's legends. You got to play legends rules now. Uh, it's just a shame. Anyway, Squigath too. I have some great memories of, of playing against Squigaths, you know, um, early on in like apocalypse games and stuff like that. You know, that was a gargantuan Squigath. But even the little baby Squigath is cool, right? You know, the rawr, little squiggith guy. Really cool. I think one of the coolest orc models, actually. And I don't even like orcs as a faction, but the squiggith was always cool to me. Kind of like a mix between a pig and a mammoth. You know, a pig mammoth, kind of. Kind of cool. Anyway. So, yeah, that's... Anyway, so that's my take on it. I'm kind of dragging on now, but that's my rant. I don't think it's a good thing. I think, you know, word of warning to Eldar players out there and, you know, Dark Eldar players, too. Imperial armor units are on the chop. Expect them to be moved to Legends. You know, if you don't care about anything having to do with competitive play and you're good with your models not being updated, it's like rule of cool, 100% for you. You could care less how the rules are. You just like to putting them on the table because they're painted great. You don't have to worry, really. But, you know, if you're somebody who likes strategy and likes, you know, making, you know, units work and, and be effective on the battlefield, Legends units are not going to do it for you. So, you know... <laughs> And if you definitely spent like 200 bucks recently on Shadow Spectres, you know, to have the possibility of them being lost, it's, it's kind of unfortunate. High CPU usage detected. Thank you, computer. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching my rant. Again, if you guys want to join the Discord, I will leave the link in the description. Basically, it's free, but you do have to do a Patreon free trial. So it's, you know, it... It's just to kind of weed out bots and stuff like that so that they don't join also. Also trolls and stuff that aren't willing to do that, you know. But anyway, you know, if you do want to support the channel, you can do that. Or you could, you know, maybe purchase something on Amazon if you're already thinking of buying some Eldar models. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so I do kind of get some support from that. And also, I do have a channel store page with some pretty cool Eldar merchandise, so you can check that out as well. I'll leave the links in the description. Now, have a good one, everybody. Peace out. I'll see you guys later.